Welcome everyone to another episode. Actually, sorry, wrong intro. Hi right, guys, my name is Z Dog. So thanks so much for clicking that button. And you know what? Click that like button, hit that subscribe button, and let me know I'm making a shit ton more content this year than I did years prior. I have my podcast to talk about outsiders, which is a playlist somewhere down in the description. And you can also follow me on my social media links, which is also down below. So quick setup this video has some slight spoiler warnings and then there's a massive spoiler warning but i'm going to be talking about Jujutsu Kaisen volume zero it's great and amazing and i honestly can't wait to hear what you guys thought about the manga and or the movie because they're both pretty great in their own respect so with that being said without any further ado here's the video this is long overdue and i'm so grateful for all of your patience Jujutsu Kaisen volume zero this movie beginning to end is a pure pure masterpiece the moment that first scene opens up it feels like you are submerged inside of Jujutsu Kaisen where you can touch the grass the water drive inside the cars it's very realistic but still on animation side the scenery the music everything is perfect and I would not ask for anything else it is a pure masterpiece when you have Maki, Unamaki, Panda, all of them get their proper character development. And you see more of Gojo, but his backstory isn't like really fleshed out and who he is as a character. It's fully fleshed out, but you do get more information for him. Honestly, the story starts off like very wholesome. And then it goes very sour very quickly. <laughs> the first scene in the... Um, the first scene in the movie, besides like that, like you're seeing the scenery is him actually in high school and him actually being bullied so huh look at that and the curse takes effect Rika which is why he's going to Jujutsu Kaisen which when you guys look at the trailer they're like oh there's no place for this curse it's because he's cursed and that curse actually triggers when people are bullying him because it's his childhood friend there's so much other things going on and he just wants to break the curse and that's the whole point of him being there because he's the only one that can possibly control the curse and Gojo being Gojo as he always is very silly and very like you know in that oh I'm gonna like you know leave shit with my students and screw the consequences bless it is great and amazing seeing Maki in a new light seeing Inumaki in a new light giving him a little bit more development seeing Panda just being Panda and nothing less is amazing antagonist yeah ghetto ghetto rubbed me the wrong way now we do know that Dragon Ball is canon in this universe because uh, I say it in season one that it doesn't matter uh, how much curse energy you use, you still can't do a, a Kamehameha. And Ghetto definitely went to the school of Frieza and I'd love to know your guys' thoughts about like, you know, how y'all felt when he spoke. Just when he spoke, nothing else. Because he, he, he was vicious, but he was also really smart. Now getting into no, full spoiler seen. territory. Oh my god. Oh, I hated this part of the movie. So, Rika is Yuta's childhood friend that dies right in front of him. And she turns into a cursed spirit. And that's because he cursed her to be a cursed spirit. So, later, like, literally, the last, like, good scene in the movie before it uh, goes to the end credit scene. Find out that Yuta is actually uh, a distant relative of Gojo. Why, like, what happened to Rika happened to her. Because now she is set free. Because, like, you know, the curse was lifted and everything. I'm like, damn, like, that's pretty powerful for you to put a curse on someone and then it'd be the level of a um, special grade curse spirit. But they called it an aberration. Now, if you're wondering, do I read the manga or do I read or do I watch the movie? I will tell you watch the movie. Because I went, I saw the movie, got home, read the manga. The manga is a lot darker. Their wording is a lot more aggressive than the movie. The movie's made to be more palatable for us here in the States. Two different fight scenes at the same time. And this is actually where the, like we briefly see everyone else that's on the shirt from the other school where they're fighting uh, against Ghetto's like little army to distract him because he wants to kill Yuta so he can gain control of the cursed spirit because that's what his technique is. He's able to take away cursed spirits that are unhinged, which means like, you know, a cursed spirit that isn't attached to anything. So someone like Megami, 
he can't take any of his Shikigami because the Shikigami are Megamis and Megami controls them because he's tamed them. But like normal cursed spirits, he can just like literally take them, put them in a ball, and then eat them. There's like a whole fight to distract all the Juju sorcerers so he can go after Yuta, kill Yuta, and take Rika. Now, there is a moment in the fight scene, and I don't know if it's going to be later fleshed out, but he is able to use other curse techniques. So Inumaki, the current speech user, he's able to like somehow make a megaphone and then use it, and then the megaphone like disintegrates afterwards. The music, which I feel like is the biggest part of anything nowadays, because music is like, it has to be impactful, it has to be perfectly paced with what's going on, and honestly, it is probably some of the best music in the movie. So most of the songs are orchestral, I mean that there's like you know band strings and whatnot and it's beautiful because it helps build the tension and it helps like you know show the mood of how the songs are supposed to go there aren't really like much like song songs like in american uh, movies you'll see like just regular songs be inside of a movie you know these are like more like artworks <laughs> inside the movie there are a couple of songs by king anu hoping that they were going to kill eve Eve is a group that went and did the intro song for season one of JJK and that song is amazing but they grabbed King Anu which they actually did the intro to Ranking of Kings honestly everything from beginning to end is beautiful and I will blame Marvel for this last part there is a post credit scene thanks so much for swinging by thanks so much for listening to me talk about Jujutsu Kaisen Volume Zero and don't forget to hit the like button hit the subscribe button and until next time peace